All right, never mind. Why uh, do we hate flossing so much? You know what? Actually, I get a kick out of it. You Prob do. You get a kick out of I'm it. I'm finding all kinds of stuff in there. <laughs> all right. Why is flossing in the news? Why are we talking about it right now? Well, a story came out last week that caught a lot of people's attention. I'll read from the New York Times. For decades, the federal government, not to mention your dentist, <clears throat> has insisted that daily flossing is necessary to prevent cavities. Turns out, all that flossing may be overrated. The latest dietary guidelines for Americans, issued by the Department of Agriculture, blah blah blah. Uh, quietly dropped any mention of flossing without notice. This week, the Associated Press reported that officials have never researched the effectiveness of regular flossing as required before cajoling all of us to do it. Yeah. So what's they the make us feel guilty if we don't do it? Again, they tell us to do it, but apparently there is no research backing up this recommendation. Research is required normally. All right, we have two dentists here to discuss this with us this morning. Dr. Chithra Durgam, she's a dentist in private practice in North Bergen, New Jersey. You're for flossing, yes, correct? Yes, correct. And Dr. Mark. Mark Wolf, a professor and chair at NYU College of Dentistry, you say the scientific evidence says not worth not, it. It's not there. Uh, that says that you must floss. And, and that's fascinating to me. Again, you teach dentistry. You are a yes. cariologist, which is a what again? It's the study of tooth decay. All right. And uh, so this is a myth that we're supposed to floss? Uh, as it turns out, there's never been a study that showed dental flossing effective at re reducing tooth decay. Right. So Dr. Dory, wh where did this come up that we had to do it every day? Well, I think we know that cleaning in between the teeth is important. If someone just is toothbrush um, cleaning their teeth, they're not going to be able to clean everything in between their teeth. You, the food gets stuck in there, yes. right? Like corn on the cob, right. which right. is, this is great corn on the cob season, by the way. It <laughs> is. It's delicious. Uh, but uh, usually your friend will tell you you got something on your teeth. Dr. Wolf, maybe that's all you need to do. And that's actually when I use floss all the time after corn on the cob. But you That's are the only time you floss? Uh, I don't floss regularly. A dentist who does not floss regularly. So you didn't need this study to re or this report to tell you that there was no information, no ba no hard science to back up the flossing recommendation. The evidence has not been there. It only minimally affects gum disease. Uh, it makes a lot of sense to get that smelly, goopy stuff out from between your teeth. Right. And if you've accumulated it, you need to clean it out well. Right. But daily flossing, particularly, I heard one dentist tell me ev after e every, every meal. meal. After every meal. Do you recommend that? Then you, that's not no, your recommendation. I, I, I have a dental hygienist in practice. She recommends flossing every day. She says, don't listen to the dentist. He's, he doesn't know anything. <laughs> Dr. Dur Durgan, yes. what, what do you suggest to your patients? Well, I feel that dental floss is a low risk and low cost option to clean in between the teeth. And I think it's important in adjunct to interdental brush to clean in between the teeth. You brought some friends with you, you did. too. Well, we're going to have a demo in a moment, but you just said low risk. I do notice this. I sometimes bleed, doctor, excuse me, when I floss. And it little a little bit of irritation. That might signal a problem. Well, it can be incorrect technique, or or, uh, or you've got a correct diagnosis there. It could be From her? gum disease. Yes. All right, now do you, you think- You may have gum disease. Let me see, open up. <laughs> got two doctors here. You're, <laughs> let me ask you this. Ready. How much of this do you think is um, uh, commercial? Uh, that, uh, you know, the, the big business, big pharmaceutical, whatever, they want us to buy this, this string Don't and, waste all and that. charge us a lot of money for it. I think that that's not the, the financial um, profit point for any company. Uh, right. it's, but it's, Johnson & Johnson and all these guys, they make dental floss. They want to sell it. And they do want to sell it, and there's some good common sense that you would believe flossing is, is critical. Um, it does no harm when done properly, mm. so there's, there's no downside to doing it. It right. does get rid of that smelly stuff between your teeth, I know. and that's, that's a very much an aesthetic issue. That All could right, lead Doc, to halitosis, and what is halitosis? Bad breath. Thank you. So what, you brought some yes. friends with I brought you a friend morning. with me. Friends. So basically, what I want to do is show the proper technique, because that's the most important thing. It's not whether you should floss or not, it's are you doing it properly. So basically, we um, move all the, like about an 18-inch piece of floss and put it between your two index finger and your middle finger. And we use the floss to hold against the tooth and go down, not snap it down, but just go down, and come up and down just below the gum line to clean in between the teeth so and come up. pretty easily, like not gently. 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 How yes. do you feel about toothpicks? I'm not a fan of them. Why not? 
because I feel that it can sometimes cause more harm based on the person that's using them and not knowing how to use it Maybe correctly. that's why I bleed when I floss. Seriously. They have soft wooden toothpicks that you can purchase that are very effective specifically for cleaning between your teeth. You mm. may have other problems there. I would... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying it's a gusher, but sometimes it gets no. a little bit irritated. How yeah. about you, uh, uh, Big Mouth? <laughs> you, what's your flossy <laughs> habit? Not, my mouth is not as big as that one you, over there. Do you, is that from a real person, the one on oh, the top? You. It's not. Look at you. Where did we get that one? Hey, what the heck is up with my mouth? What are you guys doing? <laughs> oh, that's cute. Uh, wait, back to Rosanna yes, for a I change. Try, I try to floss uh, regularly. <laughs> she flosses regularly. You can believe yes. that. What? Thank you, Dr. Except Wolf. On the weekends, maybe. Where can people find you? And how many people are going into dentistry these days? Um, about 5,000, 6,000 people a year enter dental school. Yeah. So it's still a um, pretty viable a, business, it's, huh? It's a wonderful profession. Uh, people respect us and love us. It's good stuff. NYU um, is one of the most competitive dental schools in the country. And yeah. Dr. Durgam, again, where can people find you? Um, I'm in North Bergen, New Jersey, in private practice. All right. My, my uh, cousin, Dr. Larry Rosenthal, went to NYU. I know, you know Larry well. Oh, yeah. yeah. From New Jersey. Yes. You know yeah, Larry, too? I know Larry. Why isn't he here? <laughs> anyway. He's not right. a floss expert. <laughs> not a floss <laughs> expert. Maybe. Thank you very much. Our All pleasure right. to be All here. All right. No more flossing. Right, Doc? Pretty much. For the moments. <laughs> we'll be right back.